This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. December 14, 2005. Las Vegas firefighters rushed to the call of a burning vehicle in the desert outside of Las Vegas. Now, once that fire was put out, they made a very grisly discovery. In the trunk of that car was the body of a badly burned young woman. Not only that, she had duct tape around her mouth and she had a bathrobe tie and wire around her neck. Obviously, this was a murder. They had a murder scene. Now police run the license plate of the Jaguar and it comes back to Kelly Ryan. Now Kelly Ryan was a fitness enthusiast and she she had won competitions. Like, like this was her deal. She's in great shape. She is in the physical competition. And Kelly Ryan happened to be married to a dude who was a world-class bodybuilder. This dude was in Mr. Olympia. Like he didn't win, but I think his best placing was like eighth place, which eighth place in Mr. Olympia is huge. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger won Mr. Olympia, you know, like, like this is the big times. Initially, Kelly Ryan and Craig Titus, they claimed that their car was stolen by their personal assistant, Melissa James. They also claimed that Melissa had stolen their credit cards and used them without their permission. However, during this questioning, Craig Titus did break it to detectives that he was having an affair with Melissa James and that his wife, Kelly Ryan, had no clue about this. Now, for a lack of evidence, Craig Titus and Kelly Ryan, they had to be released. They weren't saying enough to incriminate themselves and they were definitely acting like they had no clue what was going on. Now, the detectives weren't just willing to let it go, which they shouldn't be. Like you find a young woman in that kind of shape, uh, car burn, I mean, you gotta find out who did it, right? Now, police, they go and they talk to Kelly Ryan's friend, Megan Foley. Now, Megan Foley happened to be staying at their house at the time that Melissa James went missing. Megan Foley also let the detectives know that the couple had a, a history of hard drug use and that their relationship was basically on the rocks since Melissa had moved in. Finally, Megan Foley breaks down. She tells detectives that Kelly Ryan had told her about a fiery argument between Melissa and Kelly that had gone way too far and had dangerous consequences. Kelly then went on to tell her friend Megan that she had used a taser on Melissa and that Craig Titus had attacked Melissa. Then Kelly went on to tell Megan that she had injected Melissa with hard narcotics. Now during the autopsy, of course they found high levels of morphine in Melissa James's bloodstream. Not only that, Megan Foley went on to tell police that Craig Titus had given her a duffel bag full of workout equipment with a taser in it. So now the detectives have this, but they want a little bit more. In the morning of the killing, Melissa Kelly is seen in a Walmart in Las Vegas, in her Jaguar, buying seven bottles of lighter fluid and a couple of things for barbecue set. Now outside footage shows Craig Titus helping load all of this into the trunk, which police state that they believe that Melissa James's body was in the trunk at the time that that footage was taken. So now police definitely have everything that they need. Let's go get them, let's arrest them, right? But they're nowhere to be found. They skipped. They left town as soon as they were released the first time. Now they're on the run. Now police were eventually able to track them down near Boston at a hair salon. They caught Craig Titus standing outside of this hair salon while his wife, Kelly Ryan, was inside, probably getting her hair dyed. I mean, wouldn't you? Now, the couple was arrested without incident. This is where Titus, he breaks it all down. This is where, during questioning, he gives it all up. Titus says he walks in a room, he sees his wife on the ground, and he sees his personal assistant, Melissa James, who he's also having an affair with, standing there, the wife has two taser plugs in her body and Melissa James is holding the taser. 
This is where he admits he ran in, he attacked Melissa, and he choked her. But now he tries to play it off. He said, oh no, Melissa James was fine. We went upstairs, me and my wife. Melissa went to her room. About 40 minutes later, we come down to check on her and she was dead. Then he tried to say that she probably died of an overdose. Hmm. I mean, she probably taped her own mouth up too, right? She definitely drove that Jaguar out to the desert and set it on fire with herself in the trunk. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. So when detectives asked Titus, well, why'd you guys burn her? He said, I didn't want my career to be ruined. He said, we had bodybuilding careers. We had fitness careers. He was a personal trainer to the stars. I didn't want to lose all of that. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't want to lose it all. So you drive your wife's car out to the middle of the desert with this girl's body in it. Leave the license plate on it, much less the VIN numbers and all that, like, and set it on fire. Probably, absolutely, with the lighter fluid that you got from Walmart on camera. Like, come on, bro. Detectives have him what they need. Of course, they charge him. DA picks up the charges. It is what it is. They should. What's weird to me is they didn't charge Craig Titus with first degree murder. Clark County, they loved to, to throw that charge out there. They charged him initially with one count of second degree murder, two counts of kidnapping in the first degree, which is odd to me. How can you kid, kidnap the same person twice? It's just weird. And two counts of arson in the first degree, which I mean, that's, that's a pretty nasty charge too. Don't just think about the kidnapping and the murder. Arson is a mother. Now they charged Kelly Ryan with one count of battery with the use of a deadly weapon. One count of use of a deadly weapon in the commission of a crime. One count of arson in the first degree. One count of kidnapping with a deadly weapon. And one count of arson in the third degree. So I don't know if they charged the first degree for Melissa and then the third degree for the car? Like, maybe somebody that, that knows more about the law, but how do you get charged with first degree and third degree? Now, I'm not trying to take up and say that they were overcharged. I believe they were undercharged. But in my mind, I'm, I, how do you get charged for two counts of arson in two different degrees for the same fire? It just doesn't, it, that's the type of thing doesn't make sense to me. But I digress. Now, I remember CCDC went on lockdown. This was in, it had to be 06, 07 when I was in there. Clark County Detention Center all of a sudden was locked down. North Tower and South Tower. And eventually the word had gotten around through court and, and things like that. Titus had tried to escape. So that was the big buzz going around. They had us locked down for like a week or two on that. And everybody, you know, hey, Titus, did you hear about Titus tried to escape? Titus tried to escape, blah, 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 right? Now, it wasn't that flamboyant. What had actually happened is, I don't know if it's a junkie move or this dude was trying to break out one of his homies or what. Somebody got caught climbing up onto the roof from the outs, from the streets and messing with the air ducts on top of the Clark County Detention Center. These are like nine, 10 story buildings. Somebody had climbed all the way to the top of one and done that. Now, of course they were on video camera and it was in the area of where Craig Titus was. Now, Craig Titus was already under investigation for an attempt escape, kind of. What he did was he asked his CO how he could get one of their CO uniforms. Like this dude is not that bright. He must just think that he's more suave than he is because he's, he's, how you gonna come out of CO like that? Was it a female? It had to have been a female CO. It had to have. Well, he was wrong about that one. So they pull Titus out of his cell. They shackle him up, they put him, or strap him up, put him in this chair with the leather straps. It's the crazy chair. When you're acting up, they put you in it, they tie you down, and they just leave you sitting in like a, a mop closet or something. That's how they get down. They take these goggles, they put them over his face. That blinds him. He, he's not going to be able to see what they're doing, where they're going, any of that. It was a whole wild scene. Uh, everybody that was on, on that unit talked about it in court. 
they said, man, they drug Titus out of there. This dude was like, oh my God, I'm scared. What's going on? And they wouldn't tell him nothing. They just snatched him and took off, took him to the basement. Now they called all of this a high security escape investigation. What? So what happened to the weirdo that climbed the towers? They charged him with, with vandalism. Vandalism. Now, I've never heard of somebody trying to break into jail before. And I've definitely never heard of somebody being charged with trying to break into jail before. So this, I mean, this was the first. We were all sitting back dying once we, you know, kind of gotten the story. Of course, you know, the story that we had gotten was definitely not what had happened. We had heard that he had sawed through, you know, uh, the air ducting or whatever, you know. I mean, everybody makes everything up. Vandalism, though. Can you imagine being the dude in jail charged with vandalism and, and somebody's like, let me see your paperwork and they're reading your paperwork and they just look up at you and they look over at their homies. And they look back at you, look back at the homie. Hey man, I need you to come over here real quick. No, nah, man, my eyes aren't working. I need you to read this for me real quick. Yeah, tell me what that says. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro, you can't be around me, homeboy. Me and you can't be friends. You're too fucking weird for me. Or you're about that life, really. So, yeah, you probably hang out with me. I don't know. I'm crazy. Now, at this time, Craig Titus was also being called the main suspect in a plot to kill three of the witnesses in his trial. Almost assuredly, Megan Foley had to be one of them, right? Now, this man, Nelson Brady Jr., was actually charged and convicted in this case for the plot after paying an undercover to kill the three witnesses. So, this all happens, 05, they were arrested. Now, in May 2008, Craig Titus and his wife, Kelly Ryan, they take a plea deal so that they can end this whole fiasco. It's been ongoing for almost three years now. I'm sure that they know they're not getting out of it. They can see the evidence is overwhelming against them. So they take the plea deal. Now, Craig Titus pleaded guilty to second degree murder, one count of first degree kidnapping and one count of first degree arson. His wife, Kelly Ryan, she got off real light with the charges. She took a plea deal for one count of battery with the use of a deadly weapon causing substantial bodily harm and one count of first degree arson all of that for the death and and disposal of the woman of melissa james how is that justice now during sentencing craig titus spoke to the court he said things got way out of control in his words he said i am ashamed and sickened by my actions after Melissa's passed away, you won't even say that you killed her, bro. Like you're still using stuff like after she passed away. She didn't pass away, bro. She was murdered. You understand that, right? She didn't just die in her sleep. He then went on to say, I failed my wife. I failed my family. And most of all, I failed Melissa. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Now, of course... He wasn't very lucky in all of this. His judge, none other than See You Next Tuesday, Nancy Glass. Now, See You Next Tuesday, she wasn't playing around. She broke him off proper. This is one of the only times where Judge Glass, I will say, man, Judge Glass, you did the right thing. Actually, you kind of let him off soft. But, I mean, you hit him good for the, the charges that he pled to, right? She gave him 10 to 25 on the second degree murder. Then she gave him five to 15 on the first degree kidnapping. Then she gave him six to 15 on the arson in the first degree. And she ran them bow legged, all consecutive sentences. Good job, see you next Tuesday. I'm proud of you that on that one. In aggregate, Craig Titus was sentenced to 21 to 55 years. Now, right now he is in the middle of that sentence basically. He is on the second charge. He has been paroled off the murder. Now he's serving the kidnapping and now he has the arson still after 
if he gets his first parole on the kidnap. His very first parole eligibility date is in December of 2026, which will be 21 years in. So this man didn't get any kind of good time or any of that. They made sure through parole denials that this man is at least gonna do that 21 years. I would be very shocked if that dude ever saw a parole towards the end. I would be shocked if he's out before the 30s. Weirder things have happened, but we'll have to see, right? Craig Titus is currently in Lovelock, in PC. Why? Well, you killed a young woman and burned her body. And the dudes I know and the dudes I love, they're not gonna allow stuff like that. You can't come on the yard when you're high pro, not even high profile. When you do something like that, we got something coming for you. Now, as I said before, the DA had taken it light when it comes to the plea agreement with Kelly Ryan, who I just feel like probably had more to do with it and got less than Craig Titus. Now, Judge Glass, see you next Tuesday. She broke Kelly off kind of light, really. She gave her 3 to 13 for the battery with the use of a deadly weapon causing substantial bodily harm. And then she gave her 3 to 13 for first degree arson, a charge that she had given Craig Titus 6 to 15 years for. She gave her 3 to 13. She did run it consecutive, and that made it an aggregate of 6 to 26 years. But in reality, it should have been 8 to 26 years had Nancy Glass gone with the same Senate structure that she gave Craig Titus. But of course, it's a woman, what was me? Like, it is what it is. So October 2017 rolls around. Kelly Ryan is given parole. She's out. She's keeping a very low profile. By all accounts, she probably still lives in Las Vegas. Kelly Ryan, I'm sure if you're vain enough, you're probably going to watch this video because it's going to have your name in the title. And who wouldn't watch any video that didn't have their name in the title? I don't, I don't even know what to think of you, Kelly Ryan. I mean, you find out that your man's cheating. Maybe things just go too far. Maybe you gave old girl too much. Maybe he did it the way that, that it was broken down in court. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to feel. I don't know if, if I'm, I definitely want to hate you for what you did to her after she was gone. But at the same time, I'm an ex-convict. I get it. I mean, obviously there's better ways to do things, but whatever. From what I understand, Kelly Ryan was a model citizen while she was in there. She did what she had to, and now she's just low profile, wants to live her own life. Craig Titus and Kelly Ryan got divorced while they were both serving their sentences. So I'm pretty sure they probably still don't even talk to each other. And why would you? Uh, each has a, a good reason to blame each other for this. And that's where we're at. You guys let me know what you think. Were the sentences stiff enough? 21 to 55 years is a pretty good chunk for taking someone out. When you add on what they did after, it, it almost brings it in like 21's not enough. You know, nine years? I think Kelly Ryan did a, a total of nine years and I believe she's off parole now too. If you're out there, I hope you're doing better than you were, you know, in 2005, Jesus. But nine years? God, man, I just don't even know. Like I said, you guys tell me. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Tell her what you think in the comments. Kelly Ryan, if you ever want to talk about this, I mean, I'll just open up. You can come on one of my lives and you can just talk. Tell your side of it. And I won't judge you or talk down to you or any of that. I'll just let you do you if you want the world to know. If you don't, I can completely understand that too. Um, I don't know what I would be. Well, hey, I'm an ex-felon that's done a lot of time and, and here I am trying to tell the world about my story and everybody else's story. So it is what it is. Thank you for coming to Vegas Prison Stories. I appreciate each and every one of you and I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.
This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories.